everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Today is um, Tuesday, October 7th, and uh, this is the meeting of the Land Use Committee. We're going to start with roll call. Myself, here. Helene. Jorge Garcia. Here. Yvette Mejia. Here. And this, this is our new Land Use Committee. And if we could stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay. Is there any public comments? Either one. Uh, well, actually, are, you're going to speak on the Clearwater? Yeah. You can comment on that right before the item. Generally, uh, public comment. This section of public comment could be for stuff that's not on the agenda. So go ahead. Or is it? Are you speaking specifically yeah. on the Okay, so that would be right before his presentation. Oh, okay. Is there any public comments, general comments? Dr. Hi, Tom Williams. 30-year owner-occupant, resident, and El Sereno. Uh, the 710, State Route 710. We have a problem in that the city of Los Angeles basically said no surface construction in El Sereno. That is, anything north of the south boundary of Valley Boulevard at the 710. Current plans right now are to have the largest, deepest excavation of the 710 in El Sereno, north of Valley Boulevard. And it will go down about 200 feet and be about 200 feet across and be 600 feet long. This is a significant land use in that it's right next to Gripples and next to R1 Residential in El Hamro. The original resolution said not here, and that the portal, that is the big excavation part, should begin and end south of Valley Boulevard, which is the city of LA. They kind of cast that aside, and there are alternative routes that can take it under El Hamro, and that all of the excavation would be in the city of El Hamro because they want it, but I don't think they realize what they're going to get for it. Thank you. Is there any other public comments? Okay. Item number four on the agenda is a presentation. I have an agenda, please. Oh, they're right there, sir. Well, let me start off. I was invited tonight on uh, three hours ago. And, uh, Which I, are you speaking on a specific item? Or? Well, somebody called me. Should I sign a petition at the that little uh, bookstore in Madison and uh, Huntington Beach, Manchester? That's when I am. They called me today, and they said it was like 43 houses or apartments. And so that's my comment. I don't know what, because I grew up in El Okay. I worked at Uncle Okay. That's what these gentlemen are here for. They're, they're on item five on the agenda. They'll be doing a presentation. All right, thank you. Okay. Yes. Can I just speak to the board? Um, sure. Currently, you're on the board. Yeah. Someone just called them out of the blue. I, I, I feel the same way. Someone just uh, emailed us this appointment out of the blue, which is not very good. Okay. I guess what she's saying is. Previous, the previous time we were the previous time. Why is that? Why don't why don't uh, this committee inform the community like two weeks ahead of time? Absolutely. It's just like an ad hoc meeting where we don't know what's gonna happen in our community and people vote on it and we don't even know about it. We live in the community. That's what happened last time. People that attend school. <laughs> we have deadlines. Okay. We need time. That's right. Well, so I'm not sure what, what you're asking. Can we point out? Can Absolutely. Sure? So if you, I don't know if you had, we're on a database with the previous chair of the Land Use Committee. Um, this was kind of a short meeting, um, more specifically for, uh, there was no Land Use Committee for a, a brief while. 
And so we did want to get, there was a, a pending issue that had to get on the agenda. And Mr. Castell also wanted to just do a, a presentation. There's, there's nothing like a, an action going to be taken at, the, at this right. that we know of. But under the Brown Act, you have to give the community. Well, it hours, was posted correct? for 72 hours, and it also goes on our website. It's not for two weeks. Is that the law? 72 hours. 72 hours is the law. We didn't even get that. Okay. So if you put your. But you really shouldn't have a meeting because you haven't formed a community 72 hours. Correct? Yeah. According to the law. No, we met the Brown Act in 72 hours. But if we just got notice. But there's five. And there's actually the six agendas that are. She posted. already was notified from your committee for today or yesterday. It was uh, last night. There is. Right. So t tell me. So I'm, you're not. I'm concerned. Tell me <coughs> why we could, you could, or this committee could not give the community. 72 hours notice. They, they did get 72 hours notice. Who got, who got 72 hours notice? One, two, twelve. Three, four. And so you just have a small phone list? No, I don't have a list. The, the agendas posted. are posted. This is what happens. The agendas are always posted, posted in the six same locations. Where, where, where do you post? The library. Why do you ask them? Why do you ask them? Rose Hill, Rec Center, Rec Center, Osprey Senior Citizen Center. And the bulletin board on Lansdowne and Eastern. And nobody from Rose Hill? Anybody from Rose Hill? It goes on the website. It goes on our Facebook. It goes on uh, anybody who signed up on the MailChimp database. It goes out to them. So how many? How, what's the total amount of people that you notified on your email? Not okay. enough. Not mm -hmm. enough. See, yeah. this is the thing. Um, she's a new chair of the committee. The last chair um, quit. She's decided not to be on, on, a, on the, a chair no more. Both of us are just stakeholders. We live in a community. Right. So the database that was there wasn't forwarded on to her or to inform everybody because only the, the last chair had, had it. Oh, I didn't be asking that. See, I wasn't that, That's, that's what happened. My concern is we have to meet the needs of the community. So I would request that you start a mailing list with the people that are here and you give them two weeks notice so we can tell our community homeowners about this meeting. So you you have a, a, a more of a consensus, a community consensus, if we desire this kind of function, or do we have any vote in there? Does, did the city of LA say that this is a stamp deal? No, today it's just a preliminary uh, information. We're going to hear them, and then at the, at the next general board meeting, uh, the board, not, I'm not a board, she's a board, she's a board member. Yeah. The, the general board of the federal council will vote as to either approve or Okay, so uh, how much agree. input does the community have in the neighborhood the council? Commun the community yes. has input. I mean, right. the neighborhood council is supposed to be the voice how, of the community. How many members in the neighborhood council? Currently, we have 12. Wow. So we need to get more community input, correct? Right, that's, a, that's what we're here for right now. Yeah. And at the future of more meetings, there'll be more, um, you can go there also. <coughs> and you can go there also. Okay, okay I suggest something. <coughs> uh, the gentleman provides a venue and a location say within the next two weeks for a two hour presentation regarding it preferably before the first Wednesday of next month so the a recommendation could be made by this committee to the board for hearing at the first uh, board meeting What's but the with the a board? more public our board? Oh, you're the LA 32 council. neighborhood right. council and you gentlemen represent who? Clearwater Communities the they're, water, they're the developers. They're clear, oh, you're the developers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And have you made a, a community survey? A, a community one Sir, survey? we're going to get on that item on right. the agenda. Yeah. We're not there yet. Okay. okay. I will make an announcement at the end. I am planning to have another meeting for the um, Big Saver sticker license. So I don't know if we can combine. I wanted to keep them separate because I thought they were going to be bigger issues. But anyhow, we're going to move on to our agenda. We have a presentation by Mr. Boulogne. With discussion under possible action recommendations regarding a private residence located at 4135 Barrett Road, that's in LA 90032. The owner is, is seeking a letter of support for an exception to the planning department's ordinance um, 176445, effective March 9th, 05 regarding the building of more than two retaining walls. A final retaining wall is needed to align the driveway. Gaining the support of the neighbors, the councilman's office, and the neighborhood council is in lieu of having a ZA determination application. 
which is cost me approximately $8,000 and has a six to seven month waiting period. So, Mr. Bohan, Bohan. Bohan <laughs> has brought us pictures of the residence, of the retaining walls, and um, he's also brought signatures from the community, from the neighbors, right? Get neighbors, yes. You have seven adjacent neighbors that have all signed yes. consent. We have the ordinances. And. Okay. <laughs> Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alberto Bohan. Uh, I'm representing Mr. David Acevedo in regards to how you just explained. What it is, it's um, the ZA determination form is required when you exceed the maximum number of retaining walls on a residential project. Um, the previous architect who designed a house um, did not realize that the retaining wall that he had designed uh, was considered as a two sectional retaining wall. So it was already built, and when he tried to pull a permit to have his uh, third retaining wall, which is for the driveway, uh, the ZA determination was required. ZA determination cost eight thousand dollars plus. Uh, it's an extensive period, of time, six to eight months to get it out of you know before the uh, um, the approval. It's not whether it's meant to be approved or denied. It will be granted. It will be approved, but it's just the cost, efficiency, and also the, the time that it's. Uh, uh, for his hardship of trying to finish his, his, his construction. Um, he's about 95% or so complete on his residence. It's a very nice, um, beautiful home. It's a five bedroom home. Four bedroom? Five. Five bedroom, yeah, five bedroom. Thank you. Five bedroom, uh, four, four and a half bath. And um, basically, what we're asking is for the support of the uh, 36. LA 32. LA 32, thank you. LA 32 um, uh, Neighborhood Council. We have the city council visitors um, support already. A, what we're trying to do, we're trying to have this letter of support in conjunction with the neighborhood um, uh, consent and have that to be waived. In other words, the ZA application to be waived so we won't have to you know, do all that expensive expenditure and also, of course, you know, the, the time. Um, that's basically it. I don't have anything to present other than blueprints that you know we are doing for the grading. And some pictures would be more than welcome to you know, pass around. Do you want to show them the, the wall that's <coughs> on it as two walls and then where you want to build the third wall? Yes. Okay, so this here, if I may, a good way to show it the pictures. This one here. This, this here is what the city planning department sees it as a two retaining wall, even though it's one repeated with the zinc that here. Right, right. This one here. Very nice. And this is what it's built. So it's, you know, almost identical to the to what the, the city considers it to be a two retaining wall. Okay, that's what I'm Right, right. Okay, right. So even though we see it as a one retaining wall, the city planning department sees it as a two Right, 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 right. And recently he did that it was because he wanted to use some to plant some plants, some you know on there. So again, the, the city planning department will allow us to go ahead and build a third retaining wall, but it's just the cost efficiency and the time that would take to us um, you know, for the application there. Is he not able to move in until Right, right, right. We we need to um the retaining wall needs to be built, obviously. Um, if I show you another picture where you can see it's the driveway. entrance driveway. This is the entrance driveway to the property. You can see that clearly that it, it, it requires to have a retaining wall. There's no way without having a built retaining wall. This is the driveway. Right, right. And again, see, the city's not going to deny us to build that retaining wall. It's just, again, the process of getting it, you know, Getting it approved, and uh, that's where the street is there. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you're there for the property. I know. I know you are. Yeah. B O H. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So we have to pair all the applications, the, the plans. Uh, he, the fees are ready to be submitted with you know, all the requirements, ZA application requirements. We have all the, we have met all the requirements, um, along with the support of, uh, again, the city council visitor's uh, office. And um, in order for us to waive 
all the fees and the time lapse, uh, we need to, uh, you know, the very, uh, very yeah. Are there any neighbors here? Um, just walk down to oh. the neighbor. He's oh. the neighbor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, see if you have any input. But you did notify your neighbors? We did. Okay. We did, yeah. We, he, he went yesterday to uh, notify some of them. Yeah. Nobody wanted to come? Well, they already have signed the, 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 the petitions, right? The petition here and also the signature sheet here of the neighbors to their, their property. Um, mm -hmm. Is it just the ones that are surrounding this home? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's what's required. For the, 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 the immediate surrounding neighbors, which is. Right. Feet, is right. Seven, seven, right. There's seven neighbors. And we have three interests of all seven of them. So is there a number of how many feet around that you have to ask? No, that's that's a radius map. Uh, we require to do a radius map, but for only the immediate neighbors. Oh, okay. And which we... He doesn't have to put in the 40 caissons that others would have if it was across the street. Uh, my property adjoins, and we're trying to work out as to where to build the fences because I've never had a fence before. Uh, we're also trying to work in as to where the foundations and the retaining walls will be. On the other side, it's a hillside. And El Sereno and many other hill neighborhood councils had a lot of problems with the hillside ordinance and trying to preserve the hillside. So far, the Ridgecrest has been preserved. It's just a matter that now all of the front yard has to be formed when there's a lot of problems. 
and a lot of the whole site has been excavated. So that was one of the issues with the hillside ordinance as to controlling the amount of excavation, preserving the ridge lines, but also to try to moderate the mass excavations that have been required. He has one house on two lots. So theoretically, especially with the small plot ordinance, he could have put two houses there. God help him if he would have. <laughs> it would have been all concrete. So uh, I recommend that the committee make a resolution to the board, draft resolution, to support this particular one. So it's basically on a case-by-case -case basis. No general application throughout the uh, district. No setting oh. president. Yeah. I like the excavation because I'm a geologist and I like to look at the lines in the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions or comments? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I think uh, what we can say was just uh, that we have support the solution for the support of what is supposed to ask me is a retaining wall. Um, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, just say just, just that. So we want to make a motion to recommend to the board? Support uh, the support uh, yeah. Support the support of the support, yeah. Support the support of the retaining wall. Yeah. Yes, so any you? Okay, so we have, yeah. So we have a motion for the Land Use Committee to make a recommendation to LA32's general board to provide a letter of support for an exception to the Planning Department Ordinance 176445 um, and allow... Well, I'm sorry, if I may. They, they will allow us to build this, that's the thing. The only one thing that we're asking is letter of support to waive the ZA determination application. Is that how we want it? Right, right, to waive. To provide a letter of support. To waive. To waive. That are supposed to waive the yes. ZA determination application with all this content. ZA determination application? ZA determination. I might suggest that you do a draft and give it to him. He make sure it's right and gets it back. Let me try to give it to him. You mean the letter? Give him a job with the letter. Yes, right now. Right, right, right. The city council does this all the time. They'll agree to the general concept and then I uh, ask that the attorney clarify. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion for the Land Use Committee to recommend to provide or uh, to recommend to the LA32 Neighborhood Council to provide a letter of support to waive the ZA determination application for the residents at 4135 Barrett Road. And that was... On a required 30 minute wall. On a required 30 minute wall. I'm sorry. Do we only have two members? Three. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's why I need to ask questions as to what's happening. Okay, so maybe, I mean, you understand that the class, a committee will only make recommendations to the board is the final determination. And there the quorum is eight. Here it's two. And that's what they need clarification of. Okay, so, so there's a committee on the board. The committees make the recommendations so to the, the board. board, right? This is a committee. This is a committee for land use. Is uh, LA32? That's the board. That's, that's the, the neighborhood board. council. And, and you the need board. eight people there. That's our quorum right now. And right now this is a committee. A committee. Uh, two. There's three, three but two makes four. Okay. Yeah, so like if one of, if. All right, so. When there's a, in the LA 32 council, when there's eight board members and maybe there's 50 community stakeholders, does the council take the advice of the stakeholders? Absolutely. All right. The stakeholders so the are more there. the merrier for the stakeholders. All right. Yes. And the council will consider our judgment Absolutely. what's good for our community. Yes. Immediate community. Yes. 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 So make sure you put your email down. So I'll, I'll get you on the agenda so you all know. Thank you. Okay, back to our motion. And the motion was seconded by Yvette? Yes. And we'll go ahead and do a oh. All in favor um, for the Land Use Committee to provide a recommendation to LA to the Neighborhood Council to submit a letter of support for the 4135 Barrett Road to waive the ZA determination application. All in favor? Motion passes two, zero, one. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Okay, Mr. Bohan will go ahead and provide the recommendation to the general board. There's gonna be a special meeting next Wednesday. We'll try and get it on that agenda and then and, uh, I'll get you the draft letter before to make sure it says all the right things. So I'll have to have the letter ready for the board at that meeting um, to vote on. Okay. And you have what, a period of 17 days? Great, great. We'll be, uh, be uh, running it in the next morning. Yeah, okay. 17 days for what? Uh, I want to have another one, so two. Oh, yes, yes, yes okay. okay. 17 days for what, for a okay. hearing or for? Uh, this, is, this is right, to submit the application so that they can get processed into the, to the next schedule uh, meeting, which again, right now it stands at six months. Otherwise, it's gonna be pushed another two or three months after that. So I appreciate the information you sent me. Oh, great. If you don't mind, am I able to forward that information to stakeholders? Please, so do so, yes, by all means. Right, thank right. Thank okay, thank you. And moving on to item. Oh, these are all yours, right? You want to take them? Anybody in Item number five is a presentation by Clearwater Communities with discussion and or possible action recommendation regarding the proposed subdivision at Eastern and Lombardi, um, including the findings thus far from the neighborhood and community outreach meetings as well as preliminary site plans. Um, thank you. Um, so my name is Dan Cassell, and um, this is Pat Donnelly, and we're Clearwater Communities. And um, we have spent a certain amount of time so far, we're still basically in the initial stages of studying the site of Lombardi and Easter. And we've done some you know, engineering work, some kind of site plan to see what could possibly work there. And we've had you know, a number of meetings with um, various different groups in the community. And, you know, we're not done with the meetings, and I don't think we're seeking any action at this point. We're um, exploring ideas, we're kind of presenting some things, gathering some feedback, trying to listen and understand. Um, the meetings that we've had, our uh, one was at the Holy Grounds coffee shop. I think took an actual count, but it seemed like there were 35, 40 people there. Um, we had a, a meeting with the Business Watch group. Um, we had a meeting with, uh, or, or met with uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we've had a number of meetings with the schools, the Elster Middle School. Farmdale Elementary School, and we'd also sponsored a 
teacher breakfast and had an opportunity to present to about 250 teachers at Wilson High School. We also did a presentation at the uh, Senior Center. It was during their um, senior, they have a meeting, a senior citizen meeting on Thursdays. So we were there. And then um, obviously here, we for the first time to the Land Use Committee. Um, we have talked to certain individuals. That, um, and then we've also had meetings at, at, with various staff people at lots of different departments in the city, including at the councilman's office, in all these different departments like planning and building and safety and um, Bureau of Engineering and Public Works and Fire and Sanitation and lots of meetings. So anyway, you get, you get a lot of input and you know then you start to put some things on paper to to um, you know see what what is what. And um, this is a depiction and. We've actually shown a similar version of this, which is on this side, which shows um, it's the same site, but you'll notice on this one there's um, house footprints that are in blue and house footprints that are in purple. And there were 19 purple. They were indicative of three-story houses, and the blues are indicative of two-story houses. And when you know, we looked at this, the height of the three-story house is not in conformance with the Northeast Hillside Ordinance. It's taller. So one of the things we were exploring was, well, should we seek a variance to have taller houses? That's something we're seeking. And